Hey everyone, we're back with yet another video for you guys. Are you one of those space-loving guys that have always wanted NASA to go to the moon once again after they initially did it back in July 1969? Do you ever wonder how awesome it would be if the moon was colonized and you might as well enjoy a great honeymoon there? That's what we're going to talk about today. Before we begin, we'd like to remind you that if you're new to the channel, please press the subscribe button and give this video a like. Turn on bell notifications so you're notified of any future videos. The moon was found to contain larger reserves of water and craters beneath the surface. We all know the basic principles of life, don't we? Where there's water, there's oxygen and hydrogen, and there's life. Where there's life, there are humans, and where there are humans, there's development and colonization. Okay, scientists are once again eyeing the moon for any chances of life in order to colonize the area. This is particularly due to the enhanced technology we have today that wasn't present back then. We probably could make a more suitable and fruitful analysis of the situation now, which may in turn lead to some spellbinding discoveries. That sounds exciting! We all know the sacrifices that were made in the 60s and the amount of effort, expense, and will that the mission required. We need to revigorate and muster that same amount of enthusiasm to break past the boundaries as we did before when 12 American people stood across the surface of the moon. For that purpose, NASA initiated the Artemis program in 2017 that anticipates us to conquer the moon by 2024. Imagine humans living on the moon and doing things there. How cool would that be? Comment down below and let us know what you'd do if you were given a chance to live on the moon. The project was funded by the U.S. government during Trump's time in office, which is particularly because of his keen interest in space. What NASA hopes to achieve is humans setting foot on the moon once again by 2024, and for them to establish camps by 2028, just like the North and South Poles. So now let us consider what SpaceX is doing in this regard, shall we? It's thought that the SpaceX Falcon aircraft is not as powerful and strong as NASA's, so they're going to lie low most of the time in this mission. NASA has made an SLS and Orion spacecraft that has the ability to accommodate up to six people. The test flights for each of these are due in November 2021. So buckle up! We're really close to achieving our next milestone. If all goes well with some other tests on the spacecraft, then humans are for sure going to the moon by 2024. In order to cover the complete 384,400 kilometers of the journey, an intermediate resting stop known as the Gateway is being built with the collaboration of multiple countries, including Japan, Canada, and Europe. This will be achieved by sending pieces of the model one by one and integrating them all together. This will act as a resting point for the Orion spacecraft. As planned, out of the four members making the journey, two will remain in the Gateway, while the other two will carry on with the expedition. To carry people from the Gateway back home, SpaceX has a $2.9 billion contract with NASA agreeing to allow the use of a SpaceX Starship rocket that will leave Earth without a crew and will theoretically wait in orbit of the moon for the astronauts to arrive and then take them back. Sounds like a ferry ride, doesn't it? During the seven-day stay of the two astronauts who hopefully made it to the moon, the Starship will carry them to the gateway from where NASA's aircraft carries all four people back to Earth. A capsule releasing from the ship will land in the ocean, whereas the rest of the ship will disintegrate. This is where we humans face a setback in progress. NASA's budget for such a mission is a lot, and it takes up most of the government money to produce ships that will be destroyed soon after the mission. That seems like a real waste of resources, doesn't it? NASA could work on reusable ships like SpaceX, which will not only save resources, but will also motivate governments to invest more. Now, like the South Pole bases we mentioned before, each country has its own base, so it wouldn't be surprising if someone objects to the U.S. enjoying the party only. That's why Russia and China have planned to establish their base on the moon along with the U.S. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It may all be just part of a run for the money. It was found that the moon's rocks are not just wasteful ones. Instead, they can be mined for important minerals. This may be the reason everyone wants to hurry in finding the best and most resourceful sites possible. One of such minerals is helium-3, an isotope of helium that's extremely rare on Earth and is used in nuclear fusion to synthesize energy for a potential life on Moon. Just imagine how cool it would be if ships from the Moon occasionally visit your country to provide resources. And that's not all. Who knows what wonders await out there to unveil and discover, as NASA themselves said that they're in the phase of learning and discovery. 
Now, we know what you might be thinking. If the resources on Earth are getting limited day by day, the solution could be just to use the moon after the Earth gives up. That could potentially be possible. However, we must not forget even then to recycle and reuse products, because even the moon might give up one day. Maybe Elon Musk's plan for Mars could be our next savior. Just putting our thoughts out there. We hope you liked today's video. We tried to make it as informative and interesting as possible. What are your thoughts about the future? Do share with us in the comments. See you next time.